Uh, hey guys, this is a uh, recorded uh, Scribeware meetup we did from October the 15th. Uh, so we kind of do a review of just kind of getting started. It also goes over a lot of new features in uh, Scribeware 5. Everything from resequencing comments to how to organize your library if you're bringing in a library from another uh, software system or just an existing library you're using. Uh, so I hope this uh, is fun and um, maybe we'll see you at the next meeting. Thanks. There he is. Hey, Harold. Hey. How are you, man? Hey, Harold. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Yeah. How are you? Awesome. So oh, you nice. were able to get on, I see. Yeah, it seems to be working. I uh, I don't see any problems. Awesome. Did, were you able to try out the app today, or? Um, I have messed around with it a little bit. I'm not really sure how that's. I've, I've got a lot to learn there, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if, if we, I might be able. I've been able to. This always takes an act of courage, but I've been able to kind of zoom from my phone and get the app going. So we might be able to do that for a little bit. We'll see. <laughs> Um, cool. Well, I'll get going here. We're uh, four minutes after. We've got a few newer users, so I was thinking I might just review really quick for like five or ten minutes, just some of the really basic stuff, just to make sure we cover all that. And then um, I did want to get into some more sophisticated things with managing um, libraries and some things. These are some new new things that we've added recently. But um, for everybody new, this this would be kind of the home page uh, on Scribeware. So uh, you can see that the system asks you to create a report based on the last uh, template that you used. And my I use my Orca residential template for just about everything. Um, but if you wanted to create from a different template, you can open here. Um, I have a bunch of kind of I need to be able to clean up my templates here a little bit, but um, you will find a few templates that are useful here. We're gonna, we, we ship in version five of the sewer scope template. Uh, and uh, also a really nice one to know about is a blank template. Uh, and that can be super helpful if you need to create just a really custom inspection. So I used that the other day for a drainage inspection I did where I got under 50 mobile homes. And uh, it was nice to be able to just start fresh and create a really unique template. And um, if someone wants to see that, I could show that off in a little bit. But uh, mostly uh, I'm gonna create stuff from my Orca residential template. So I can load a new report here. And you can have as many templates as you want. The risk to having too many templates is is this. Like, let's go under plumbing for a minute. We'll go under uh, water heater. And, you know, this keeps evolving for me. Like, I keep adding more little sections and cool things that I can do. And and I'll, um, I can kind of show you why. I mean, if you just come down here, I mean, it asks for electricity. Uh, and then under straps, it's like, well, it becomes hard to miss this, right? If you're doing it on the mobile app, you're standing right in front of it and saying, well, are there straps, you know, um, none found. And then as soon as I check that, it gets me my whole narrative that I, you know, straps are needed. Is there a pad? Uh, there's none noted and one is required. Is there a drain pan um, present without a drain or none noted and recommended? So it, it's kind of nice, right? The, I'm just literally check the system is asking me what I need to know to inspect the water heater. And then it's sort of giving me the responses uh, as needed. Um, just letting Alex in from Massachusetts, it's cool. Um, so in any event, that, that because this is so neat, what you'll find is the more you use Scribeware every day, you're kind of like, hmm, I might like to add thing, something for a bollard you know, the hot water heater I did today. So I might come down and do bollard. Now, um, if you have multiple templates, you would, and you have multiple water heaters and all these different templates, you would then need to go tweak that water heater section to all of your different templates. And that can be kind of a drawback. So I really like trying to have just a single template. I think that it um, gives me the flexibility I need to, and um, I, Harold the other day asked, well, what if you have a duplex and it's really easy under water heater here, you can just come up under these three dots and you can copy this section. 
And so I do that and now I've got a second water heater and you can come up and retitle these. So water heater unit number two and the other one might be unit number one. Um, so to this end, my residential template, I mean, I've, I've used my residential template for up to a sixplex um, and you can add six water heaters, you can add six electric panels, you can add six kitchens. It doesn't take all that long and you can kind of get it flushed out ahead of time before you even leave um, if you know that you're doing a sixplex. Um, uh, oh, we got Scott here. Awesome. Nice. Um, and I noticed, hey, Alex, uh, you on here, Alex? I am, yep, thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, good to see you, man. Uh, you guys, Alex is from the uh, Boston area. We met at the ASHI uh, New Orleans this year, or last year, whatever, this year, beginning of this year. Good to see you, man. <laughs> good to be um, here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, I hope that I'm uh, trying to explain here just why uh, in general, I try to stick with a single residential template because I find that it can really do everything I need it to do up to maybe a sixplex. Uh, I, you know, we, I haven't built a template for doing multifamily because I don't do bigger than sixplexes very often. Um, so it just hasn't really come up, but it, it, at a certain point, you may want to build a chapter per unit, and that would be a pretty different looking template where you'd have you know, the electrical, the kitchen, the bathroom, all within a single chapter. That would be another another way to do it. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get a little more into template creation, but um, that shows you a little bit of the flexibility and kind of why I, uh, generally I just have my single residential template. So now we got just a basic report up. Um, a bunch of you are on version four, at least some of you, or that's what you're familiar with. So when you, you upgrade to version five, which we're hoping to get everybody on in the next few weeks, you should see all of these little icons here. Can you guys see them? They're all the way at the very far right side. Uh, and we're shipping with uh, a whole bunch of diagrams now. So when you click on the little faucet, you'll get all of these illustrations included. Um, they're really awesome, in my opinion. Most of them are done by <laughs> Charles Buell. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, we, I, I love these. I think they look great. And um, compared to some systems, what I like that we're shipping with is that there's a lot of good stuff, but it's not completely overwhelming. Uh, and I've added some things for myself. These are a bunch of gas meter clearances that came from PSE's uh, 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 sort of installation manual for their um, gas meters here under exterior. I'm including, I, I snagged a bunch of these from the James Hardy manual for Hardy Plank. Um, so we will be, once you get to version five, you should be seeing all these showing up in just available to you. And um, if you want to add some of your own, you know, maybe you have, what I would encourage you to do if you have a lot of illustrations you like to use on your own is, is try to put them into similar folders that you might want here. And then you could go click on this and that's going to give you a back end into your computer. And so uh, for me, I could go under, you know, under my OneDrive, I have all my Scribeware diagrams. So you could open these up. Of course, I've already got these connected, but you could go through and, and then dump more in if that makes sense. So it's just this little plus plus sign up here would let you add more media here. So you can kind of go through and uh, edit these. Um, the other thing that you'll see that's new is this little mobile media icon, and that's what connects to the mobile app. Um, so this is a report that I did not do. I mean, I just opened this, so there's nothing attached to it. But if I were to go out now and take a bunch of pictures on my mobile app and hit that, uh, as long as I have an internet connection, everything would kind of sync in. And I can show you guys that. It's um, it's really, um, uh, Scott is on here. Scott Saunders, you on here, man? I don't know. He might just be listening. Yeah, I'm on here. Yeah, I've been mute. How are you doing, Scott? Nice Pretty to see good. you. Pretty good. How are you doing, Dylan? Everybody owes Scott a, a big thank you because uh, he's got, uh, what did he say? He lives out in the sticks, so he's got That's right. pretty, pretty dodgy internet. And he, boy, he, we, he get, went through the ringer just making sure Scribeware would work, having really poor internet connection. Uh, and the issue is just, you can imagine how complicated this is. You're taking millions of pictures on a device and you don't have an internet connection, then when you get back, everything needs to sync properly. 
uh, and we seem to be kind of through the weeds on that. It's working amazingly well. It, um, I, I know other systems do this. To me, I still consider it nothing short of magic that I show up and all these pictures just start populating in this thing. <laughs> I can't get over it. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it really, it's just yeah. awesome. I love it. So uh, anyway, if you're not on the mobile, we hope to be starting to move everybody over soon and you'll find you need to make sure the app uh, is obviously you have to have, sign up with the same email account so that your accounts are linked. And then, um, you know, when you load a report, you're going to you want to load the same report on your desktop it, you'll see this same home page show up so tomorrow when i'm doing this inspection i would want to click on that one and that's why i would want all the pictures to go right so the the pictures are become attached to a single report if that makes sense um so let's see where is this one we were playing with uh, so yeah, that kind of goes over this stuff. Now, anytime you see three dots, that's always worth clicking and have a look, look at. The three dots in this case open up this whole little folder thing. So we can, you could choose different little little bugs that you want for your folders. Um, and uh, I kind of have them pretty well set, um, but you can add more categories here. You can add a whole new diagrams folder. Uh, and if you guys have used four, you should see recognize this one where it says media. But even though I have the mobile app, I keep a, an extra media one and I use that to connect like my thermal camera images. Uh, sometimes I've got my old beater crawl space camera that I use. So it's pretty cool. You could actually have um, multiple little media folders uh, and then you put your, your memory card in and connect a bunch of different devices that way. Um, I, I, it's embarrassing, but, and I, I'm not, geez, I mean, you could get into um, other things, right, with crawl space camera, or uh, crawl space, those, uh, what do you use, Mike, the big crawler camera underneath, you could get into drones, so, you know, we're, um, we're often managing lots of different devices, even if we have a mobile app, uh, for me, it's infrared camera and crawl space camera, but um, anyway, I hope that that kind of covers that, any questions on this, anybody? Pretty straightforward. Um, so uh, we could connect some pictures here with just the regular media folder. Um, we'll open it up and you use the little um, folder here and that can go searching around on my computer. So I'm gonna go into my pictures. Uh, and I think I have some slides here that are just sort of demo slides. Um, so now it went, found that folder and it's just going to kind of connect them here so that I can use them for this project. Uh, adding pictures, you guys all probably know this, but you just drag them in. I mean, it's really fast. Uh, once you use it, you have a little check mark that said you've used it. And if you want them to kind of disappear, you can just uncheck the show all media and then they'll just kind of disappear as you use them in the report. And that's my favorite way of using them because um, I like to kind of work off of my pictures. And once I've used all my pictures, then I know I'm getting kind of close to being done with the inspection report part of it. Um, so let's see other stuff here. I mean, obvious, right? Client name, property address, agent name. You can see it remembers your agents and stuff. So makes it a little quick, makes it go quickly. Um, another, I don't know how many people here use the ISN, but we are now connected with the ISN. Um, so you hit sync up here and then you can see where these have just been imported. So I didn't need to write these over again. Um, so you just, yeah, sync with the ISN and it should bring your stuff over. Um, if you are an ISN user, let us know. Um, we'd love to make sure that that's working for you and stuff. Um, I think phone numbers is something that's come up, Steve, that people wanted uh, phone numbers. I don't think we're bringing those over. So it's possible we still need to adjust the home page a little bit so that we get a little more data brought over from the ISN. But um, uh, but that's how you how you do it. Let's see. Uh, down here, you can put the invoice items that it was a home inspection and what the fee is. You can just um, put that, you know. 
uh, paid or not. So uh, if you got paid, you can just check that and you can say how people paid you if they gave you Venmo or whatever. And if not, if it's if you don't check paid, then it automatically generates an invoice and all of that will show up automatically on the last page of the report. Uh, we've had a few requests for being able to disable that. And I, I don't think that's available. Is that correct, Steve? I think you have to have that at the moment. Might be a piece of customization that we're working on here. Um, let's see these three dots up here. If you click on these ones, uh, this is a good thing to know about. Um, we automatically generate a summary page, but if you want to disable the summary page, you can disable it here. Uh, and we automatically include the scope and purpose of the report and how to read this report. And again, you can disable these and not have them show up. Um, the thing that we're getting really close on that is quite possibly bigger than the tunnel under the English Channel is being able to expose these for uh, editing, right? So that each inspector can, uh, uh, currently, if you want to edit these, you have to send it to us and we've been uh, modifying them for you. And I, I, you know, I don't know if you're still listening, Steve, but I, I think we're like a week away or something for um, being able to expose those for editing. Uh, which something I, like that yeah yeah <laughs> something like that uh so anyway we're getting close on that but that's what the the this little the three dots do for you up here uh back to the i will, yeah, I will say dylan that um being brand new users and not having a lot to say about using it yet but having been using we used home gauge for years and prior to that we used uh home inspector pro and we are isn big time um, I really like that we're going to be able to, or that I can, knowing that I can send. Oh, you still there, Lisa? Oh, I think she, I think you logged out, Lisa, or something happened to your internet. But we're standing by when you get it back, back together. You there? Well, okay. can everyone else hear me? Is it? Is it? Yes. On? Okay. Cool. Um, cool. Well. Yeah. Will, the, will, the, will the numbers from ISN go over in terms of the fees? Yeah, the fee comes over, the client name, email, property address, agent name, agent email, the fee. Anything else, Steve? I, and I think we want to get the phone number coming over. That That's a, uh, some work that we'd like to do. Yeah, we want to get the phone number. Um, there's some tweaks around like uh, building size and your build and uh, things like that. You can put a lot of data into ISN and it doesn't necessarily uh, translate over cleanly. So if there's stuff that's really interesting to you as you start to use this, that would be helpful for us to include, let me know. It's kind of a manual process of whack-a-mole to, to bring over the right uh, right data. So um, as we get more users on this, I, I'll, I'll be interested to in know what is interesting to people. Hey, hey, Dylan. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I like the way it tries to predict the next ICN number. Yeah. Yeah. You like that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it doesn't always. Sometimes I'm skipping back and forth, but uh, yeah, it does that so well that sometimes I kind of forget that I need to go load up a new batch of ICN numbers. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so you have to be a little careful. Harold, are, are you a, are you a pest inspector? Uh, no, I, I uh, was up until about 09 yep. and then uh, I yeah. let it go when the home inspector licensing came around. Yeah, this is a Washington state thing. If you're a licensed pest inspector, you have to have your ICN number, but it remembers yeah. it every time I, I create a new report, it adds a new number for me, which I, I adore. So it's hard to remember to do. Um, hey, Dylan, one thing on the, uh, the sink from ISN. Mm -hmm. is um, <clears throat> like you have, I have certain narratives attached to the age of the home, yep. depending on the age with all the disclaimers. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. When you pull that date over from ISN, it doesn't populate that narrative for you. I know. So and I have to go back and double check. It's funny because sometimes it'll, um, you can see here, I, I have narratives attached to like square footage. And if I list the square footage, I have a little thing that says, I'm not measuring this for you. This is just the reported square footage that I took. And um, one of my favorite ones, and maybe we'll let Charlie show his off at some point, is just year of construction. Um, but for me, if I go down to like 65, for example, I automatically populates a bunch of narratives. And Steve, I've noticed that the ISN will give me the 65, but it won't, it doesn't trigger the narratives to come in. 
Um, Does any of, the, any of the data that comes from ISN trigger the narratives? I don't know if that ever does it. I can't, yeah, I couldn't attest to that. Yeah, Sometimes I, it'll populate the narratives for the age of the home, construction date. Sometimes okay. it won't. So it's yeah. kind of sketchy. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't I I don't think I do that. We do that currently, but um it's definitely something I should be doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, the funny thing to me is that it'll actually put the data in, it just doesn't trigger that narrative to come up. And so then you have to kind of rejigger it and it and it comes up. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and in theory, there's a lot of stuff that probably every user would want certain building characteristics, conditions, and limitations that are coming over from ISN and having that trigger some of these things, I, I would think. Um, uh, it, Dylan, can you decide what you want to have put in the report? Like for me, I wouldn't want the fee in the report. Can yeah. You turn that off? And, so, and, and when it does the fee for the report, does it do the fee for just the report or does it do the the whole fee? So yeah, you could add things. So like if you do radon down here, uh, you could put that in and um, if that was your question. So you can keep adding stuff and it does the math for you at the end. So that's kind of nice. If you, uh, I think like all things with Scribeware and, and this is good if you're newer to it, the logic we try to implement through the entire process is if you leave anything blank, it doesn't print. Right. So um, we could go look real quick. Steve, what do you know what happens if we just have nothing here? I think an invoice yeah. might still be, be made. We could preview it here. Um, Roger, are you, are you putting your um, uh, invoice items into ISN and saying you don't want to have those necessarily carried over to... Well, uh, Scribeware? Yeah, I use uh, QuickBooks for my invoicing, but I just, because I use ISN, I just use one invoice a month through QuickBooks. Okay. And, I, and I print a report from ISN, key it in, it makes it real quick. But I'm in a state where the inspection agreement must have the fee for the home inspection listed on the agreement. So originally when I was doing that, ISN was printing the total fee for the order, which was not accurate. It had to have only the fee for the home inspection, not the radon, not the irrigation. Oh, interesting. You know, no mold inspection. It had to be just one fee. So they wrote me a little algorithm that does that, and it puts the fee on the uh, home inspection agreement. But we're not required to put the fee into the report. Yep. So I just started leaving the fee off of the report. And well, so uh, I, I currently am using Home Inspector Pro, and they have it to where you can, for the cover, uh, for the report cover, you can decide what you want from ISN to appear on that cover, and that's kind of nice. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, Steve, I, I, I'm just pulled this back up, you guys, but I think if there's a way that we could add another little radio button to remove the the sort of invoice receipt. I think that would be ideal because we've had that request at least one other time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Did, and also be able to give, put out the receipt, the invoice or receipt uh, without the rest of the report. That's been another thing that's come up. That's right. Yeah. Is sometimes people want just the receipt and right now it's always attached to the report. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. That, that's probably my biggest thing is being able to attach or detach it from the report. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. See, I collect my fee through ISN you know, the, for the credit cards and stuff. So all, all the payments come there. So when I send them the report, if they haven't paid, it prompts them to pay. Yep. And yeah. and so it, it, it 100%, you know, I get paid and I don't talk to them about the report until I get the money. So. Yep. So for you, you'd like to really just disable it. And like for Christopher, he'd like to, I think that it's come up for me with like, people need the receipt for the lender or something. And it would be nice yeah. if they could just print yeah. it more separately, more conveniently, you know? Yeah. Yep. So cool. That that's great, great data. Hey, Steve, guys. would that go hand in hand with uh, being able to attach a PDF? Because I'd like to attach my WDI, my NPMA uh, 33 form for my termite inspection, as well as the radon report. I'd like to have them attachable to the report so they could just pull that out as a separate PDF. <laughs> and if we could do that with the invoice or receipt as well, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. As far as being able to access the individual PDFs. Um, but Scott, you have the you uh, the 
radon and other PDFs that you are referring to are generated per report. They're not a single PDF that you just include standard, like a, you know, mold inspection pamphlet or something like that. Is that right? No. Yeah. There'll be, yeah. One for each, we, okay. one for each inspection. Yeah. yeah I it. would be uh, uploading them to Scribware or mm -hmm. dragging them into, but it'd be nice to be able to pull them out if we could yep. just have a little hot link. Like I think home gauge, I seen one of their reports. You can actually click and get the termite inspection. It'll populate or open in a PDF. Yeah. But yep. it's attached to the report. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's a pretty high priority for us is to be able to add those attachable PDFs. Yeah, thanks, Scott. That's definitely on the list. We've been hoping to get that one here. ASAP. Um, cool. Well, I'll keep I'll keep going through just some some features here. Um, again, this is for new users, but under settings, if you click this, there's a bunch of different stuff. This is where you can set your logo and you notice there's a header logo and a print logo. I, mine works for both, so I haven't needed to set a print logo, but the reason we had that is certain people's logo would look really good in the, the PDF or in the HTML report, but not in the PDF. So now you could actually set two different types of logos if that is needed. Um, but so this is where you just set up your company information and you can put all your fancy badges and that kind of stuff. Uh, this just tells you what subscription you're under contracts so um we're that's another thing that should be getting um improved shortly but our contract works really well our editor has been kind of down for a while and so uh, you should be able to import your contracts and send contracts get them signed online uh so it, we it, we we can manage all contracts digitally and your clients can sign them online uh, this is, if you're using version four, this is newer, and this is just custom modifiers. And uh, we have on our list to maybe even add a couple more of these, but um, it's pretty cool. You can click on this stuff and you can uh, change the color. You can change the definition. So we've got one user that's been adding safety items. So he put safety and um, changed the color around that. So these are the qualifiers that you use in the report and they're, they're pretty customizable now. You can just click on it, uh, give it a new name, change the color around, give it a different definition. Uh, if that, that makes sense. So uh, again, we're doing this from, uh, from the settings button here. And something else that's coming soon on that on the observation on the modifiers is uh, the ability per modifier to specify if it's going to be if we should be included in the summary. And if it is included in the summary, if we should include images for all the observation inside the summary. Uh, and so some uh, and also if we should include the modifier or sorry if we should include the modifier in the report. So the idea there is that you could have a report that is essentially centered around the summary with all of the uh, relevant, interesting information all listed by major concern, repair, uh, recommended maintenance, et cetera, as we, as we do now, but include all the images and all the rest of the data that we don't include right now. And then your report could then become just simply the fields and check boxes that you add in, um, and it's just kind of uh, basic basic data about the house, but not necessarily any um, uh, issues. So it should allow a lot of flexibility around how you want to design your report and actually create some uh, interesting uh, scenarios and approaches to all that. Does that make sense, guys? It actually was an idea that came to us from uh, Mike from from Massachusetts. Uh, Alex, I think you know Mike. He was a past ASHI president, but he he liked the summary page so much. He really wanted the whole report to basically be the summary, and then just to have a couple pages of if you're a home gauge user, it would be styles and materials all kind of condensed into a couple pages. So this would give an ability to add a, a very different type of report, which I, I think is a cool idea. So yeah, we're, we um, this at the moment you can customize all of your modifiers, and pretty soon we'll add a whole other round of customization, which will really help you customize the summary page as well. Uh, integrations. So this is how you would connect to the ISN, and you can see this is how you you got to. It'll ask you the questions you need to connect with the ISN. 
Uh, and then the what's new, we try to keep a little log of all the different changes that we're making. So if you wanted to see it, you can actually find that uh, under the settings. That makes sense, everyone? And again, that's this little wheel cog right here at the bottom, bottom left. Yeah. Um, cool. So let's see some other things here. Does anybody use frequently used observations? Anybody use that one? Yes, absolutely. Every time. Nice. All right. Cool. So frequently used observations, you can click on this right in the beginning and you can choose what is available here. But if you want to, you know, before you even show up at the house, you might have 10 comments you want to make that you do on almost every inspection. Um, so that you can come right to this frequently used observations in the beginning. I, mean, I live in a rainforest, so pruning vegetation off the house. I could check that pretty much before every inspection I do. Um, recommending a level two chimney inspection. If it's got any kind of a wood burning, I'm probably checking that one. Um, let's see. Uh, some other things. If it's got a septic system and I'm working for a buyer, you might check that one. Um, moisture alarm recommended for the washer. Lead and asbestos if it's an old house. So the reason I don't use this much anymore is um, I, if we go to like, for example, that lead and asbestos, um, as soon as I checked 1965, I got my lead and asbestos comment automatically. So I have built so many things into my pull downs uh, that I just don't need, I don't need the frequently used comments anymore, but that's what it's for. And, and I know a lot of people still like it and it's kind of cool. It's just on the very front page, you open it up and um, I'll just show you how you can, any comment can be added to it. Um, I'll just add a new comment here and um, we can edit this in the library and uh, see right here, this radio button, this is a frequently used observation. Everybody see that? So this is available to you anytime you're in the library, any comment, you can just toggle that on. Uh, and now it would be one of the available options for you right at the very start of every inspection. Does that make sense? Frequently used observations. So, um, Dylan, Dylan yeah. I got a question. Um, can you go back to the screen you were just on with the, the roof one, like that one? Yeah. So, with those two comments, can you, I see that there's two new lines over on the solid color. Can you, can you pull one comment above the other? Can you reorder? Yes, those? you can. Thank you for recognizing that. You guys see the little equal signs. You can now resequence your comments. Can yeah. you do that? Can you do that in the field too? Uh, you can't do this on the mobile app yet. I don't okay. believe, right, Steve? I, That's correct, but you will be able to. Yeah. You can't do it in four? No, this is five. And Margaret, we're, we, I'll, I'll try to, I'm gonna send you an email shortly. I know you've been waiting for five and we'll, we're getting close here. I'll, I'll try to hook you up here in the next <laughs> day or two. Um, so yeah, resequencing is really pretty sweet. I love it. You can now put them in sequence. The other thing that's working really well. I mean, uh, I'm, you don't for if you're really new to Scribe, where the in bringing pictures in like this is just really fast and awesome. So I just dragged in however many pictures, and you can resequence the pictures uh, here as well. Um, so you can kind of move these around. Um, uh, if that makes sense being a little bit boggy, I think, because I just brought all these in. But um, yeah, really easy to resequence pictures and then resequence the uh, the comment. I find for whatever reason, it works better to bring the bottom one up than bring an upper one down. I don't know why, <laughs> but. Hey, hey, Steve, um, in that frequently, can you go back to that, the frequently, frequent frequently observation? Used. Yeah. Yeah, click on that. Oh, uh, uh yeah i was wondering if there was a way that uh, these could be broken up by sections they, so that's like, what that's how they are see over here on the right charlie the clothes washer waste pipe mechanical ventilation okay yeah all right all right yeah I yeah, it, so it's still, you know, I, I, again, I don't need to use it as much because I built out my template so much that, I mean, just for me, for example, if I'm under plumbing and it's a public sewer, this was already filled in, but 
it could come on discharge type under waste plumbing, public sewer, and I just built it where it automatically gives me my comments. So, it, right. I, I just, it, it, in other words, that uh, frequent observation, if you checked a, a box in the frequent observation, does it put public sewer up there? Uh, no, I don't think it would. It would just put the narrative comments down. Right, here. right, right. right. Yeah. So, and so it, it just, it kind of got outdated for me, but partly that's because I've, I've gone through and made sure to connect everything. If, for mm -hmm. example, you were a user bringing over a home gauge library and you lost a lot of these nice little orange connections that I've made, the frequently used observations would actually be a really sweet way to get a lot of your stuff connected really quickly. Uh, and then you could go through um, it. I, I can show you guys uh, for newer users, if you want to see it, how you build these little orange connections and how you connect uh, these pull downs to narratives. It's um, kind of addictive once you get into it because it's just, <laughs> it, it really makes your whole report writing process like you're just checking boxes and yet you get these beautiful narratives popping up. I mean, it, it, it's really freaking awesome. Hey, hey Dylan. Yeah. My, uh, my narratives aren't auto populating anymore. There's like, they're not there at all. So if I can, um, if I go to a view library, I'd have to like copy and paste and put it back into that section. And what are you on version five? Yes. Something must have happened when it started yesterday. The, the two reports I wrote yesterday, they weren't, nothing was auto populating. It's still not doing it. So yeah. Steve, any any thoughts there? Something must have happened to disconnect your library from the sections, and I kind of wonder if it's this new library management feature. Aaron, but Aaron, if you could hit the, uh, uh, if you could open up a report, click something that you expect to be populated, and then hit the see, send feedback button, and okay. let me know like what you're seeing and what you know what what should be um, uh, what should be happening. Then I can take a closer look. Now just send me the logs. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, sorry, Aaron. That something's obviously gone sideways. So that, that shouldn't be, actually yeah. break. So, so when I yeah. go back to four, I just tried it. It works there. It's yep. just on the newer version. Yeah, something. Yeah. Something must yeah. have happened in the library there. Yeah, I we had an issue yesterday with somebody. Uh, uh, something happened with the import process um, where not all of his libraries came over. So it could be something related to that. Um, but uh, yeah, I could take a closer look if I get a specific example. Sure. Thanks. And so just so you guys know what Steve's talking about is submit feedback here. And if you click that, you can just send a direct message to us. And it also sends these trace logs that help Steve and our coders figure out if there's something going wrong and what, what's going wrong. So pretty, pretty awesome that we have built into it just an ability to diagnose things um, uh, quickly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, cool. Um, let's see, what else could we keep showing here? Um, we should, let's see, just looking at this. Does any to show uh, Charlie the colors? Yeah, so we've got a new text <laughs> editor. <laughs> uh, so yeah, up here. Okay. I hear you moving me right to six, Steve. <laughs> So this is, this, if you guys are, I mean, this is probably not available to hardly anybody except maybe Mike on here, um, but the text editor is new. Um, one thing that I already am requesting, Steve, is uh, here you can do these different headings, which is kind of cool. That is so cool. But I really wish that I could do also just use that heading and part of it, whereas these, I can only seem to use it for the entire narrative. That makes sense to you. No, you should be able to. It's for it applies to a paragraph, and so if you created several paragraphs in that. Oh, area, okay. Then you can. Then it should. So uh, I could make a bit. paragraph here, and then I could come up here. Yes. Oh, there you go. Cool. So as long as you make a little <laughs> space and do it, you can. Get, uh, <laughs> yeah, be Charlie. <laughs> yeah, Charlie. <laughs> Uh, there you go, Charlie. And then you could also come up here and you could make add colors to it. Uh, so we could. You're make... just teasing me, though. <laughs> so there you go, Charlie. We're gonna lose. We, nobody's gonna hear from Charlie for a few months. <laughs> yeah, totally. I know. <laughs> filling with his library endlessly. Um, yeah, kind of nice, Steve. I I love this new photo editor. Um, or or text editor. We also have a newer photo editor. If you haven't seen this for a little while um, or you're not on five yet so this will look a little bit different but the probably the single biggest thing is you can now add text um, right on the pictures um, 
your filter. We've got arrows, uh, which we've always had. I actually liked your old arrows a little bit better than these ones. Um, you can do, uh, you know, the circles and you can make them into kind of ellipses and stuff and different shapes. Any We're, font font choices? Or? You do have a few font choices. Um, down at the bottom. Let's see. Yeah, down here when you do the text, there are three three font choices, and then you can change the size into uh, different, you know, small, medium, large, extra small kind of thing. Hey, Steve. Yep. Is there a way yet for us to be able to change that to where we can have it set up as a default if we want the thin line versus uh, the normal? The whatever you used last should be the default. So if you see a case where that's not happening, then let me know. Um, it's not happening. <laughs> uh, for arrows or what? Um, for, yeah, arrows or circles or. And it's just the size yeah. of the line, the thickness of the line. The right, style yeah. Of the arrow. I'll go in, let's say, you know, get a dash line, go uh -huh. back, try to put in another one. It always defer. It goes back to the original default. Wait, are you talking about a dashed line or a? Um, yeah. A uh, oh, okay, so not the thickness, but the dashing. Right. Got it. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to know. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I can take a look at that. And just so you guys know, this is a this is an editor that was built for us by another company, and uh, they uh, I, I do have uh, I've I've been talking with them about. Um, optimizing the ability to draw arrows um, instead of having it drop on there and then having to drag it around, uh, being able to do more of the style that we had before, where you can uh, click on it and then. Uh, oh, that'd be uh, awesome! Yeah. yeah, and he and and it's uh, they're in the process of doing a bunch of other changes, so it's going to be late this year or early next year that they would be able to look at it. But it's definitely something we're looking at getting done. Nice. Yeah. There are some other things you can crop the pictures, which is kind of nice. It doesn't do the perspective crop, which I do love, but at least you can crop them. Um, so that's good. And then um, these filters can actually be, or not filters, this colors here, you can change the contrast and stuff. Yeah. And I've actually found this really helpful. Um, you guys know when you find mold up in the attic, how sometimes it looks terrible and you take a picture of it and the flash just washes it all out and it all looks bright and perfect in your picture. <laughs> it always drives me nuts because I'm like, I swear it looks moldy when you don't take a picture of it. Anyway, with these things, I can kind of, you can actually make the mold look really terrible <laughs> too. You know, you can kind of fiddle with it. So, um, you know, it's not uh, endless photo editing, but there's some cool stuff you can do here. And I love that. Nice. Yeah, yeah, the contrast and the brightness are probably what I use most. Yeah, right? I mean, it can really help a picture. It's amazing. You overexpose them sometime. You're where there's like, there's this weird fireball in the sky. They, I think they call it the sun. <laughs> we don't have that so much around here. But, uh, you know, sometimes on sunny days, uh, the pictures can get all overexposed and stuff. So, yeah, uh, we that this is now the, the default editor. And then, like always, we've always, if you set on your computer your favorite, if you have a favorite photo editing um, product, uh, like Mike Paris, for example, turned me on to, um, ah, geez, what's the name of it, Mike? What do we use? Photoscape. Yeah, Photoscape. Let's see if I bring it over. Do you guys see it if I bring it over here? Are you seeing a new editor come on or not? Yeah, uh, yeah. yes. Cool. Uh, so now I'm in uh, a different photo editor and, and I it Scribeware automatically connected to this because I set it as my default photo editor. So now I can go under the editor. These are some of the pictures I've used in the report. I can drag them in and I can uh, do a bunch of bunch of stuff in here. The one thing I do love about this one, I, the magnifier is really cool. So you can magnify things so uh, when you're done with this you guys see the save button here you, you need to save it um, uh, and then you save it here under scribeware the directory um, should show up in the report although I'm not sure this one just because I was we were just fiddling around here in a different section but um and that editor is also uh, that's the desktop you're on now yeah, that's correct. And so you would want to get any editor you want as the default photo editor on your desktop. And then you, you, anytime, any picture that you use, 
you open it up and you can open external and that is sort of a back door into other photo editors. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna have to figure out that and uh, and you're using uh, what did you say that was that that uh, one you're using Photoscape Pro X, I believe. Um, and another, you know, probably if you want to use another one, I, you can drag pictures in Describeware if you use two screens. And I think like, I, I think that's what a lot of users do that spend, you know, really spend a lot of time on their pictures is they get them all doctored on another screen and then just drag them in Describeware, you know, from one screen to the other. Mike, is that how you do it often or? Well, uh, Sometimes, but uh, most of the time I just go from photo to photo. If I need to add something to it, I'll just open the external editor and it goes okay. there so quickly. I mean, really, it doesn't take any time for you to do what you need to do. Yeah, yeah I, do, I do all mine uh, that way. <clears throat> you, Charlie, you do all yours on a separate screen and then drag them yeah. in. Yeah. yeah, so. I like that I isolated zoom that you did. I use that on my reports a lot. Yeah, I love I love that little camera. So Photoscape Pro, you need to buy it for a subscription for it. I think it's like it's a lifetime subscription and it's like 30 bucks or something. And then and then you set that as your default editor and then you should be able once you open external, it's just talking to your machine and saying and, and gonna open whatever your default photo editor is, if that makes sense. Yeah. So cool. We're trying hard to give us a lot of options. Now, this is also where you write captions in Scribeware. Um, so you can write a caption for the photo down here. Uh, and then that will show up in the report. Hey, Steve, can I make PowerPoint my editor? <laughs> uh, can you, you can if it, uh, if you can configure it to open images by default. That's all, all, all I'm doing is saying whatever the system configured system editor is, we'll open the image in that editor. So I don't know if you can actually do that in PowerPoint, but that's not my fault. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Charlie, you could, I've never tried it, but go, if you go into, you know how you set under your settings on your computer, see if it gives you an option to do PowerPoint. I kind of doubt it, but. Yeah, I doubt it. See. I will look though. Yeah, it's worth a shot. Um, so let's see, we've got some, um, do you guys want me to go over the bullet and caption feature? Uh, like if you have tons of electrical problems, for example, how you make, make a list of stuff, that'd be helpful. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So I'll actually skip out of this. I, I might go to a report I just did today, just cause it all sort of comes to mind. Um, I was working on it. Um, this will actually show you too, um, right here. These are the images I took on the mobile app today and it's showing all of them and I can then get rid of the ones. You guys see this okay? Everybody seeing it? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Um, so uh, if we go under electrical distribution and finish wiring, you can see that I've got this listed as a major concern Charlie's totally jealous because I got a little bit of red text in here that I've added. Um, and I've already been dragging in pictures. A bunch of these I captioned on site as I went. So on the mobile app, it's kind of nice. You can either use the voice to text or if that, sometimes it gets slow for whatever that has to do with my cell phone, then I'll just type them in. But, um, you know, under gauge wire, missing cover plate and loose receptacle. Uh, I did, you can tell I did this one with the uh, voice to text because it says missing cover plate and loser receptacle. <laughs> uh, we'll fix that um, on the north garage wall. So I, I've, I've, I kind of got all these already set for the most part. I just dragged them in. We can look over here and see if there's any other electrical pictures we would want to add. Um, here's the missing cover plate for the AC disconnect, we could just add this. So we'll add 
Uh, now, the reason I love this so much is when you're doing a house and you find like 20 electrical problems, I, I, I find the report doesn't read very well if you just have 20 repair items there because at the bottom of every repair item, it says hire a licensed electrician to further evaluate. And I, it just gets kind of embarrassing to me to repeat all of that. Um, here's a, a dead receptacle. So this is a video I took and I can just drag that in. By the way, Steve, I would love to be able to caption my videos. I don't know if that's possible, but um, that would, I would love that. <laughs> so just scroll. Hey, Della, and I was able to caption that it crashed my app, but um, I accidentally hit the video and I typed in the caption, my app crashed and I submitted a feedback. But once I got back to the office here, um, once it synced, it had a caption attached to the video. Yeah, okay. it was a weird deal. Was that on? So you captioned it on the mobile app? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it crashed. <laughs> yeah, great. Let's see, we do have spell check in here. So. Um, no shortage of electrical problems on this one. I, I actually already filled out other stuff here. Um, we'll just call this good for now. Um, so, you know, you can see I've got all this stuff. So I just leave my cursor right up here. And then this is the magic button with the mountains and the bullet below it. And I hit that. Uh, and that gives me a bulleted list of all these little comments below. Um, and so if we read this now, it says overall numerous defects and red flags are noted in the wiring system, indicating unreliable and incomplete wiring practices. I recommend additional inspection to repair the entire wiring system by a licensed electrical contractor as additional repairs could be needed that are latent or concealed. This should be considered urgent for safety reasons. Examples of observations and defects found during inspection are included in this electrical chapter as repair items and also include abandoned wiring noted behind the water heater, missing cover plate and loose receptacle north garage wall, under gauge lamp wire used for a light at the entry, non non-metallic sheath cable wiring has not been properly sleeved and secured into junction boxes. Uh, this shows the fan in the attic. Abandoned wiring in the attic above the garage. See north side of the attic. Missing cover plate, AC disconnect, extension cord used for garage lights. So, so that probably wouldn't be so necessary, that list, uh, if you're sending the pictures to the summary, right? That's true. Although I, I think it makes for a really nice comment, you know, I mean, uh, but you, it's correct. If you sent the pictures to the summary page, you might not even need to hit that little button. But now that if you go to the summary page, uh, you know, obviously you wouldn't have the pictures. And so you would just be seeing this part of the comment. So I, I use this feature all the time for any system where there's multiple defects in the same system. So um, roofing, for example, um, uh, siding, uh, electrical, uh, sometimes structural things, you know. How about the uh, caption library and for the mobile? Is that in the works? Because that would make it way smoother in the field. If you could just do the voice to text, keyword search, and then if you were going to do this bulleted, you know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It awesome. is it's definitely in the works. Um, uh, and we'll be pivoting back to uh really you know driving the mobile app to release um here as soon as we finish up these last few and then uh, will the uh, text replacement will that be available in the media caption library yep. and, and scott that's why we did this major change to the editor uh is so that we could have an editor that was compatible with a uh, mobile app sweet because that would yeah. make this option here just a breeze in the field yeah, sure so yeah. no yep. no more dotted line under the uh, text replacement huh is it not showing? Is it's kind of how it, it does. It might look a little different by Zoom or something. Um, yeah, I'm just seeing a plain line. I don't gray yeah, gray it's, line. It's dotted. It's dotted. Uh, yeah, my, yeah. Mine's it does dotted. look a little different. Yeah. Um, so uh, does this make sense, everyone? Anybody have any questions on the using your photo captions to populate a bulleted list below a general statement? Um, I, you know, as someone like Charles was mentioning, if the uh, pictures in the summary, I'm one that uses pictures in the summary, um, because it seems to really, a lot of the clients and stuff that I have out here and everything, they like it because then they don't have to go and search the report when, 
they need to send it to somebody. They just send the summary and the pictures and everything there. So I don't use the bullets too much because I actually, what's in the bullets, I actually caption under the photo. Yep. And then it's in the summary. So I don't use the bullets too much. So if I'm using the bullets, then I'm typically not labeling my photos. Yep. No, that makes sense. And, and um, uh, that, that summary page feature will be probably super helpful for you. I mean, you, you should be able to get that dialed in where your summary page is just like you want it. So Christopher, when you're doing, when you're doing your photos in the summary, do you have them print in the report and in the summary so that they're duplicated? Um, so, and, and actually I was trying to, I've been trying to figure out how to separate on my home gauge, but I haven't put a lot of time to it because I do have a separate summary. So I actually don't like the summary being combined with the report on the report side of things through HomeGage. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if someone prints off that PDF and I take the summary out and they don't have the summary. Um, so, in, but with this, I'm almost liking the idea that uh, um, Dylan was talking about earlier, where as the summary feature is really my report. So that way you can just go through and everything's there. You just click the tab. Doesn't matter if it's summary report, it's one and the same. So right. by being yep. able to add the photos to the summary, it's kind of one and the same. So when my clients are saying, okay, the major items I want fixed, they can actually just hit the major items or whoever's looking at it and that's it. So it wouldn't matter if it's summary or report, it's there. Yeah, I, like just... the way, I like the way Dylan has broken this down because really for me, I don't even know if I'm super concerned about needing the summary because it's already divided, scheduled. It's already just labeled. I mean. Yeah, I was just curious if you had the pictures printing in the report twice, which. Uh, uh, well, it is in the report and in the summary with what I have now, yes. And that, that so is. Okay, so it is twice. Yeah, which me personally, I, I just, I have less in the summary. And then if they want more detail, that's where they should go to the report to find the more detail. Yeah, yeah that's that, that, that actually encourages them to read the report. I like that. I And I do like that, but that is the problem. People are lazy. And for instance, I had one where I had, uh, you know, window. Um, I had it labeled. Anyways, the window was broken and somehow, so they sent over the uh, summary to the, the tech. But when he went in there, he's like, oh, well, I thought it was the living room. He, he, the dining room's right next to it. You see the window. But because it wasn't specific, he's like, oh, I didn't think that was the one. Um, so people get lazy. So having that duplicate. So when they when they try to be quick, they just send that summary over. It doesn't matter. The picture's there. Yeah. Um, Chris, so do you find that are people actually printing to paper? your summary a lot or is it no, uh all no. it's all handled in pdf no they just go they go online yeah. and um usually the summaries hit and then after they've gone through the summary a few days later then i start seeing the hit saying they're looking at the report mm -hmm. yep. PDF. Because yeah, my, the i think my whole reports get printed to paper all the time <laughs> shows you how old school all the agents are where i work now, <laughs> now, when I'm sending them, now a lot of agents lenders um, or builders for new construction, they all want PDF because they want to be able to print it and carry it onto the job site Yeah, or, or things like that. So it does get printed um, every so often, but uh, for the clients, you know, just a standard client, they're just going online. Yeah, And I'll see, every, like just now, I just got a, a, a notification about four months ago, a client's opening up and looking at the report. So um, now I've got maintenance items, maintenance tips and upgrades. So I, I tend to see that every so often up to a year out, but it's Steve, all online access. Steve, that cool. has been a request too, is that we could see when reports get opened and, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, um, for sure. Um, but, um, uh, so cool. Uh, okay. Well, I think that goes over that, that uh side to things what else can i show you guys here um big so one Dylan, if, i'm sorry no if, go ahead if y'all add a couple of more things you're going to be eliminating isn aren't you yeah i mean it, you know the isn does a lot i mean jesus mm -hmm. that thing will like make your coffee for you in the morning mm -hmm. if you put your time into it but i our objective would be that a one-man shop 
type business could not need the ISN, right? That you could mm -hmm. kind of do basic scheduling, contract delivery, accept payments mm -hmm. through Scribeware. That's what we're mm -hmm. shooting for. I I don't see us ever kind of fully going after all that. I mean, the ISN, like You're tracking right. your mileage and like, Jesus, they yeah. do so much weird stuff i mean it's all cool but i i just i'm not it we'd be a long ways out to get all of that um but yeah that that would be our objective is and you know if you're using it you can give us feedback of things that would help you kind of just get that sort of basic minimum yeah. i use the isn and i i can't imagine i use more than 10 percent of what it does mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I, but yeah, if you offered the meat and potatoes, I might let the ISN go too. Uh, I, I, I like it, but my biggest thing is the credit cards and the fact that if my client's not there when I send them the report and they have not paid, it prompts them to pay before it allows them to download the report. Yep. So yeah, we need the ability where they have to both sign the contract and pay before it, it could open, or you could check which. Right. So I right, actually let people open it if I haven't been paid, um, but they I, they have to sign the contract and so you could choose however you want to do it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just can't afford to let them do it without paying. Yep, yeah. yeah I've only people, gotten burned twice, so. <laughs> um, no, that, that's great, great feedback, Roger. We're, we are kind of slowly working that way. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know, if, Steve, if you have any thoughts on all that, but I, I think we're sort of trying to get there. <laughs> Hey, Dylan. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to leave here in just a couple of minutes, but I was going to ask Steve uh, just one thing about uh, mobile or maybe two things. And uh, that would be um, the subject about, is there any way we can get it where we can move the button to take the photo from one side to the camera uh, of the, the device to the other side? And second, is there a way we can get a timer function to take a photo because if you're using a tablet and you need your other hand to hold something, you cannot reach far enough and hold the tablet and hit the button to take the photo with your other hand holding something. So we fixed that or should have fixed that uh, about a month ago where on tablets we put the photo, the, the shutter release on the side. It's actually a totally different layout on tablets than it is on the mobile. Are you not getting that, Mike? No, it's still at the bottom. Okay. And uh, so, uh, Kaylin, she uses the tablet. I use my phone, but okay. You know, there's so many times that we you you just can't reach it, so yep. you're stuck, and you have to get the other person either to to uh, hold something or to take the photo or whatever, but. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, that should be fixed. Um, so, and, and, and we're just, instead of doing a timer, I just changed the UI so that when you're holding the, you know, with your left hand or your right hand, you can actually press the button with your hand, with one handed. Okay. Well, yeah. is it possible yeah, to do a timer, about. Steve? That would be really sweet. It is. It's just, it was, it was an easier and, and a cleaner fix for Mike um, <laughs> at the yeah. moment, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, we're uh, obviously we've got a lot of um, uh, large features to get uh, get through on mobile uh, as well. So, but yeah, we will eventually do that. But in the meantime, that that side button should work. So I'll take a look at that, Mike. All right, thank you. Do you know what kind of tablet you're working using? Yeah, it's a uh, Samsung Galaxy S six. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, and so everyone knows where we're at. I mean, the, I use the mobile every day. It's totally working, but we still, um, it works with version five and version five is what I have up here. And this is what we've been really spending a lot of time just trying to kind of get a bunch of these features that you're seeing and being able to resequence reports and being able to customize the summary page and new text editors and new photo editors. So we've been putting a lot of time into version five. Uh, we're hoping to be kind of, through a bunch of that work here in the next couple of weeks and then head back to the mobile app and um, really put some effort into kind of polishing it. It, it we haven't really done that yet. I, I love it. I use it every day and it, it's been working great, but there's a bunch of little things like that that we plan to address here shortly that'll just make it even better. <laughs> um, cool, anybody have any questions so far? I, I could show, there's, uh, you know, one thing I really did want to show here uh, was this new library feature. Um, I don't know if Alex is still on here. Um, I know, and are, are, would, are there some people that might be coming over from HomeGage? I'm here. 
cool. Yeah. Let me show you guys this. So this is this is pretty this is brand new kind of stuff. And Alex was one of the first people actually whose library we, we imported from um, uh, from home gauge and I'm now in the, the library back end and you'll notice now when you're in the library you get the little magic three dots and when you hit this what it does is I have gone through and the old version of Scribeware all of your narrative comments were attached directly to the sections in Scribeware and the problem that we had with that is that everybody's rejiggering these and then if you bring in a system from another you know, like home gauge, then they're going to have different categories, right? And different, the sections never kind of lay out perfectly. So Steve thought a lot about this and realized that, you know, it makes sense really that we should have our narratives organized by, by simply what they are, not a section. Um, and so I've gone through, you know, we've got attic access, attic exhaust vents, bathroom and sinks and cabinets, bathroom toilets, um, this should all look like a list of like all the, you know, I'm just kind of breaking down all the different things we deal with. Now, one reason why this is really cool is if you wanted to build, say, um, garage electric, you could build a new section in your garage chapter and you could call it garage electric and you could point electric receptacles and fixtures to that new section. So does that make sense? So now that it's an example, you could have you can have these categories now be directed to multiple different places in your template. Can I get an amen on that? You guys, does that <laughs> make sense so far? Cool. So the other reason we did this is that um, if when we bring over libraries from HG, oh, I need to just go out back in here real quick. Um, when we bring over libraries from HomeGage, um, they often look like this. So we get an HG and then a bunch of comments attached to it. And so now what you should be able to do is if you wanted to, for example, get rid of the Scribeware uh, ones entirely, you could actually um, like heat sources, additional heat sources. You could click on, oops, sorry, that's not what I wanted to click on. You could highlight this, click that, and you could just delete Scribeware's version of it entirely if you didn't want any of the comments that we ship with. And then you could come under and use your HG and you could, um, I guess I give a poor example, like floors would be a good example. Um, I think mine is under interior floors. So you could, again, delete all of mine and then just turn your HG library into the flooring section, or you can meld them. So let's say you wanted to keep the, the default comments of interior floors. You check that, and then I come up to my HG and I've got 17 floor entries and I check that. You can hit merge and merge them together. Does that make sense? And so that way you now have both of the, those narrative libraries available to you. So, um, you know, this is a little tricky. It's not for the faint of heart, but what we're trying to do is create options for when you're importing somebody else's, your, your library from another system to be able to start kind of blending things together so that you, they can, you can get to all your stuff. <laughs> can, you br can you bring those back after you've deleted them? Are they still in the... Uh, it becomes kind of permanent. So if you meld them together, you can't unmeld them. Right. But if you check, like if you had your home gauge heating system and then you, you checked off your heating system ones, could you at a later date bring those back? Um, uh, not, not by yourself, but it's something that I could assist with. Okay. And we're looking, uh, there's, uh, there's more library work that needs to be done at some point. Um, especially for Charlie's, uh, bring over Charlie's library and things like that. But uh, um, for now, especially Alex, the, the route we took from New Orleans was uh, a bear, I know. And um, this helps at least maintain a bit more of the uh, categorization and gives you some logic about around manipulating uh, which, uh, where those, you know, which of those, wh how to uh, bring them over into Scribeware how to translate it and if i can just finish demonstrating it just i'll go into the report and show how you point a section so i'm under my branch wire actually i want to get it this is like somebody's report so i want to get out of here we'll go into 
something just to fool around with. Um, if we go under garage, or let's take something simple here, oil storage, and I click my three dots to edit the section, this is the edit the library category. And when I click on that, I can see I've got 15 oil storage comments, but if I wanted to, I could also connect my clothes washer comments and they would both be there. Does that make sense? So you can, in this way, once you organize your comments by category, you can point them or multiple ones to whatever section you want in the report. That makes sense. So the real challenge now becomes um, getting your comments connect, uh, getting your, in my, for me anyway, and that'll probably be for most of us, is getting this organized where it's like, all right, I've got all my comments here and you can go in and read them. So clothes washer, I got 64 comments. And when I come in here, I'm looking at comments. One thing that I love is Steve added our, an ability. You can see how this one's connected to four different fields need a little orange up there. So that means I, I've got little orange pull downs that are connected to these. The blue titles help me because I know like, yeah, if it's got a blue title, that means I've fiddled with it somewhat recently. So that's probably good. If I go deep into the bowels of this thing, I've got probably here's an old moisture alarm uh, comment and I don't want this one anymore. Uh, and so I can come up here and remove it from my library and get rid of that. Um, it's possible, Charlie and I were talking to Steve, it's possible at some point I might ask you to remove any comment from my library that doesn't have a blue title or isn't a media caption. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you guys feel, but I mean, I've been working on a library for like, you know, 20 years or 18 years or whatever. And I, geez, I got so much old crappy stuff that I would never write in a report that I just, it's, I sort of drag it along with me like this old tired baggage. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes you have to purge that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I have, I'm feeling the need for a purge. I can tell you, mm -hmm. Roger, I, I got a lot of stu stupid stuff in my report that or my library that I like to get rid of. But, uh, you know, in the meantime, what I'm doing is trying to work through because I can see what's connected in my report template. Um, I under almost every section, I have common observations. And this is kind of an, a logic tree way to find stuff. So, um, you know, propane storage, secondary regulator comments. But my goal is that I, I, I kind of can figure out all these. And if I end up with stuff that, um, it, it, you know, when I, when I go to view the library here, things that are not connected, I might d w just delete as well, if that makes sense. It'd be a, another way to kind of clean up my messy library. And so, and Steve, without all that junk in there, it would move faster, wouldn't it? Yes, uh, in some ways. I mean, you can move through it faster, for sure. Um, and, you know, doing stuff like global searches will definitely uh, be quicker um, the, with fewer entries you have. But it's not that dramatic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Why, is yours, Charlie, are you really slowing down? Oh, yeah, painful. <laughs> Is but, really? but I'm on four. So. I know, it's true. Yeah. Well, but I mean, really... just so you see, like I'm scrolling through this right now, and this has 400 comments in my decks. It's pretty fast. So, I mean, that's a yeah, lot of comments. But, yeah. but in four, like, say, pick one of those. I, if you click on that and you say you want to delete that, well, that's going to take my sidebar thing all the way back up to the top. And then I got to scroll back down and try to find this. Yeah, spot. it yeah. would be really nice, Steve, if when we're deleting them, it stayed right where you were. I, I just fixed that on Monday. You did? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Wait. On five, though. On no, five, no. of course. <laughs> You're just torturing me. <laughs> Charlie, you ready to come over? I, yeah, I'm <laughs> come over to the dark side. That's right. <laughs> We're getting close, Charlie. I, I, we can't be too far out for you. Um, anyway, does this make sense? I, you know, this gets to be... I. I our goal was always to make Scribeware super intuitive. We were really thrilled. I think Harold just kind of tried it and started, did a report. And so that's, that is our objective is to keep it that simple. But we're also trying to support people like Charlie that want to do all these crazy things to it and allow somewhat unlimited customization. And certainly library management, it's just freaking tricky. I mean, we all have like thousands and thousands of comments that we want to 
be able to sort of organize and get to and edit and <laughs> but at least having a system to be able to do it that's uh, that's awesome <laughs> yeah that's that's what that's what we're we're working on so your feedback on this is is welcome when you guys get get on five but this is you know how you, how you start fiddling with all this is library and these three dots and that's going to start getting you into these library categories um so that there is awesome yeah it's pretty pretty cool it's a it's a neat way to work you know you can it's nice seeing how many comments are in each section i mean i got almost 100 heat pump and cooling systems remember that also includes photo captions as well um so guys i've got to run but uh it's been really great oh there's that bug you were talking about Dylan. yeah yeah, yeah. It, what's interesting when you get that is if you scroll down it almost always goes mm -hmm. away yep yep there's a little ui yeah, it's a weird timing issue that's happening but anyways um it was uh, great seeing you all and and uh having a uh and uh, be able to see you know like what your impressions are and and um where your areas of interest are we always love getting the mm -hmm. feedback it helps helps us prioritize what we're doing so this has yep. been really helpful thank you steve yep thanks. thank you steve thanks steve see you buddy appreciate it um Cool guys, is there any other stuff that I can show you guys that would be helpful? Just a quick question, just to, uh, so, you know, I've been going through, so slowly attaching uh, comments to drop downs, you know, attaching those. Nice, items. yeah. Um, but I see, you know, I, I love like seeing what Charlie did the last time he was showing us and stuff. And then seeing what you're doing now, that's just a, a world of difference for me. But, You'll hit a comment and then like four comments come in based on that year. I love that. Um, so my question is, are you basically doing the same thing to attach one? You're just checking multiple? That's yeah, that's correct. So if we could go into general comments and I'll just show you how it works. Uh, we'll edit the, edit the section and I'm going to go under year of construction and we'll hit suggested observations. And we'll go down to 1965 and we'll hit next. Now you see I've got, here's my solid conductor aluminum note, but I've, I can collect, I can check as many as I want, right? Here's my wiring temperature note. So you're just in your library now in this section. And I think I had one other checked here, lead and asbestos, you know? Does that make sense? So yeah, you can, I mean, it's pretty neat. And, and one technique I've used a lot that I really like is, uh, for example, on sewers, uh, I do tons of pre-listing inspections. And so you can see how, if it's a public sewer, I recommend a sewer scope for both the seller and the buyer. Now, the drawback of this method is I have to remember to go in, if I'm working for a, a seller, then I'll just delete this. Um, but I, my, my logic is I would way rather bring up two or three comments and just delete the ones I don't want. I just think that's faster. But, uh, <laughs> but on the same hand, you could, you could have that d description up there where you say public sewer, it could say. I could have public sewer buyer, public sewer seller. That's right. Know? That's uh, right. So that would be another way to do it. And that starts getting it like, you know, to me, the funnest part of Scribeware is like, you can, you can dial this thing down. I mean, you really, if you put some time into the template, you can get, and remember all the customizations you make on the desktop carry over into the mobile. So the, the mobile has been influencing my template as well, because you, as the more you use it, you start to see like how you can create speed and efficiency right, right from the mobile app. So I, I hated, I've always hated as a tradesman, everything, looking at reports with just the check marks. Um, I always felt it was just too simple. It was just no good. But what you've done by doing this, you, you've, you've got an elegant, sophisticated report that's put together as simple as a check. Yeah. I, I mean, the ultimate goal almost is that you're simply describing the systems, what HomeGage would call styles and materials. And as you go, all the narratives just populate for you. And then you just attach pictures to it. I mean, that's it's it's uh, it, in a way it's uh, legible check marks <laughs> yeah that's right and i mean in even better in an even perfect world you go to like how i've done the water heaters and you you know charlie's flushed this out way more than i have 
which can start taking a lot of time. And this is sort of a, a conundrum I have of a, for a default template, what, what's the sweet spot? But, you know, this is asking me questions that if I go down and fill out the answers to this, you know, and here I, I just, I can now drop my data plate in here, right? Well, that's pretty sweet. It's a tank, how big it is. Um, I attached a little blog there to, to this one, but, you know, it's asking me the questions that I need to answer to get to do a good job. So you can even build, it's building in a lot of kind of covering your butt to make sure you do a good job because it's just right in your template. Now, the tricky thing is like, if we all use Charlie's report, it could take us too long to fill out a report. I mean, it's just, it, that exactly. if you apply that logic of like, okay, I'm gonna create a report system that asks me every conceivable question that I would need to answer about any given system in a house. Not only am I completely incapable of building that template, Charlie, I'm impressed. Yeah, but but I was, steal from everybody. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't but, know. I don't know anything. <laughs> but even if you had it, that's that's a lot of time to get through, right? I mean, that's just going to take you some time. So anyway, we're I you know I think we all struggle with this. Like we all want to write great reports, but you, you've got limits to the whole thing. Yeah, you know? but you can see how that can protect you. <clears throat> you know, you're not going to be able to get through the report without remembering. Oh God, there was a laundry room. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, uh... that, well, that's right. I mean, the way I have this set up, it would be hard if you were on the mobile app, especially to not check whether it's got seismic straps. I mean, it's exactly. sitting, sitting right there for you. So if you struggle remembering the main water shut off or any particular thing, you can just build it right in, you know, yeah. you have to do it. Yeah. Protect uh, yourself however you need to be protected. And everybody's different in that respect. Some people have incredible memories. I don't, you know, I just... But build it into the into the software yeah. right yeah yeah Probably, i got a bail guys yeah right on man but, um can i ask answer any more questions for anybody you guys we got a couple you know it's roger harold i know you guys are kind of newer so i'm happy to show you tell you anything you, you um so currently the the four is out and the five is is unavailable right i can get you five Okay. I've got the inside track. <laughs> we, you you we, know a guy, right? <laughs> yeah, I know a guy. I know a guy. Uh, well, so what's been happening is we've been very reticent to have too many people using five because we were adding so much new stuff to it constantly and it makes it unstable and we don't want many people having problems. So, mm -hmm. so we've been kind of, you know, very cautious on who gets five. Um, we now have five in a pretty stable place. And now we have a version of five that we're not touching. Um, Scott and I are both on the front lines. We call it the alpha channel, but mm -hmm. we, we sort of take the punishment for everybody. And, you know, <laughs> when there's new code, there's just always problems. And, but with Steve's coding, I mean, I'm telling you, once he stops touching things, it gets really stable. I mean, there's, there's not technical issues our our issues are 100 percent. just we're building so much new stuff and you, you throw a bunch of new code out and you just have to work through it so yeah. anyway i we now have a, 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 a our five channel is pretty stable we're not touching that unless we vet everything through the alpha channel first so um if you guys shoot me an email i can get you on, on to five I'd, I'd be christopher and roger i'd be happy to get that for you guys and yeah, with, I, I can send you the download it's pretty cool he's he's managed to make it so one link if you go to the link from your android phone in download scribe where it'll give you the android app if you go from your iphone it'll give you the iphone app if you go from a mac it'll give you the mac app mac desktop and if you go from pc it'll give you the pc uh, app so you can use this one link to do all four different main devices there mm -hmm. um and then you can have the mobile app too well, I got to go right now, too, fellas. Um, it was good to meet you, uh, Roger. I didn't really get a chance to talk to Scott or Harold, but you guys, good to see you on the thing. Yep. Um, and again, for uh, Dylan, you and Steve, man. man. Oh, thanks, Christopher. Yeah. It, it's magic. The I, more I, I'm like, oh, my God, man. <laughs> so, that's awesome. No, we really appreciate you guys' support. It uh, means a lot to us. We love the sort of community we're building. We're, we're trying hard, so thanks for your support. It's great. Mm -hmm. All right. You guys have a good night. All right. Cheers, Chris. Thank you, man. Nice to meet you, Chris. Um, yeah. So anything else I can go over with any of you guys? Um, 
I, I did have a question on the mobile app. I so I just downloaded it today, and I, I noticed that when you know I log in and you know I've, I've, I've gotten into it, it doesn't seem to link up with the information um, on the desktop or the the, the laptop model. Um, is that because it's a version five and I'm working with version four? Yeah, that would do it. Laptop? Absolutely. Yep, <laughs> okay. that'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you got to okay. have version five is what's what connects to the mobile app. Yeah. Got it. Sorry okay. for the confusion. Yeah. And you okay. should, if you should be able to have both, I believe, right? I, I mean, I, if you got the mobile app, you should be able to download using okay. that same download, I believe, get get it on your um, your, your desktop. The, oh, the, the, oh, okay, use that same uh, link that I had to, uh, to get the desktop uh, version. Yeah, I'll shoot you an email just it, um, it, to just to be sure. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna okay. plan on emailing you and Roger, and I'll send you the link, but that should get you version five and the mobile app. And then of course, you want to make sure you're always using the same email address, because that's how our system connects everything. Right. And if you have troubles connecting, okay. let us know. But um, it, yeah, you, you got to be on version five, and then all those. And in theory, then you you can we charge per inspector, so each inspector could have fifteen different devices if you want. Um, so and they is they should all sync. Um, that would start to be unruly because you know there's all these updates and stuff. So two or three is probably plenty. <laughs> yeah. So, so far, I've got about three three laptops. You know. Be, between me and my wife that, you know, they all sync together just fine. But yeah, when I loaded the, the uh, mobile app, it was like, okay, this doesn't sync like the others did. Yeah, so that's I noticed the, it was version five and this is version four that we have. So that'll uh, do it. It makes sense. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So let us know if you have troubles moving from four to five, but you should be, it, I think when you download five, it should, as long as you put in that same email address you had for four, it should carry over all your template stuff and you should be off and away. Okay. Yeah. Cool. The only thing it doesn't bring over is your old reports. So old published reports, it does not bring over. You can still oh, run, okay. yeah, you can still run version four so you can run them in parallel. At some point, we'll try to do that and get everybody's reports over. That's just the one thing that it doesn't do. It brings your your data, your templates, and your library and stuff should should move over. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I guess to start modifying it, then you just would start a new report. That's correct. You mean your template and stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, we can go over that. If you notice in mine, uh, Roger, how, see it, I have under, this would be under the client name, I have template now. Mm -hmm. What I try to do is have a template and notice the date, it's in like 2027. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And I put it way out in the future just because I want it to sit on the top. And then that way, like whenever I'm like, oh, I'm going to do template work, I, I just open that one. In theory, every time you open up a new report, it's a blank report and an opportunity to work on your template. Right. So you can just open up a new report. Um, the one thing I would discourage you from doing is saving your template when you're working on an actual report. Uh, and the reason is you'll just end up picking up, like, let's say you're doing a house and it has two water heaters and you now save that template, your new template will have two water heaters in it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So yeah. it, it's a, it is a bummer. Your library is really easy to work on and save while you're doing a report, but the template is best done when you want to fiddle with your template, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so by, by, by doing that, um, well, see, for, for me, I edit my template in another software all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very fluid. And so I, I, you know, there's probably, you know, four things I change each inspection. Yep. You know, because it's, it's, it's definitely like a living, breathing thing. Yep. Um, but um, I was trying to think, because like I do, um, you know, the multiple bathrooms and multiple water heaters. I'd have to go back and look how I've done it. Because I, I started hard and heavy getting into scribeware and then the COVID hit and thinking we were going to be slow. I had made this long list of things I was going to do. And with interest rates staying low, it's been busier than pretty much ever. I know. And I've had, uh, 
you know, doing uh, slumlord rental units and, you know, luxury homes like the next day. I could do that 9,000 square foot home <laughs> one day and then three uh, triplexes that, you know, are like section eight stuff has been really weird. So crazy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know it's been busy. I mean, I think you nailed it. Interest rates are practically free money yeah. right now. So, yeah. um, uh, yeah. So, um, anyway, I, I, I wish that template editing were slightly more fluid and that it, and maybe we'll figure out a way to do that. But the advantage of Scribeware is the way you can keep adding bathrooms, you know, so if you need to add mm -hmm. a bathroom, you come up here and you, you um, uh, copy the chapter and, and it allows this great flexibility so you can mold the template perfectly for every job. And, but the bummer then is if you end up coming here and, and Harold, just so you know, when you save the report template, it's this little floppy disk icon is a good place to do it. Yeah. So when you're done fiddling with the report template, come up here and hit save. Um, anyway, I, you know, we, we go around of, of like, how could we make that better? But it's how it is at the moment. Maybe we'll figure out a way to make it a little more fluid is a good way to describe it. It's not mm -hmm. super fluid. I try to remember things I want to do to my template and then go in and dive in and fiddle with it, you know? Yeah. Cause like, like for me with the, uh, home inspector pro, like I have, uh, 10 breaker panels, 10 bathrooms, uh, when you're doing something really big, but th for the most part, I never use those. I just use the one or two others. And then every once in a while, when I change something, I'll go and copy those. And I think that's how I will probably do it with Scribeware. I don't know if I'll have 10 bathrooms, but I probably will have at least four. Yep. That's and, what uh, I do. I've, I've got four and then I can just leave them blank. If I don't use them, I just yeah. don't touch them and, and you don't have, you don't have to delete them or anything. So, mm -hmm. you know, I've got a crawl space chapter sitting there available to me. And if it doesn't have a crawl space, I just don't touch it. Um, oh, right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Obviously because we get a lot of slab houses here. So. Yep. And, and one thing you can do is come up into the crawl and just, if you check this little box here, it'll turn it green and that can just kind of help you know that you don't need to go back there if it, if it mm -hmm. helps, you know, um, yeah. I, I like it. It's it's magical the way that it works. And sometimes my mental limitations are the biggest restraint that I have as far <laughs> as being able to have enough creativity to to, to do it. I, I'm like Charles says, he's not smart enough to do it on his own. He he said he he copies other people. Yeah, I like to plagiarize. I, I may not be creative, but if I see something, it's a great idea. I will plagiarize the hound out of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Why? Well, that's to me. I feel like home inspection training is like you get in front of somebody else and listen to their vision of what we do, and you yeah. steal all the ideas you like and you ditch all the ideas you don't like. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I I think we're all a bunch of thieves, really. I mean, that's kind of but that, that's the fun part of the business. I mm -hmm. I. All I've ever done is borrow from do, other people. Do you think you'll ever do the sewer scopes? <laughs> oh, yeah. We, we've got a sewer scope template. Um, I, and, know, I mean, do you think you'll ever do them personally? In your oh, uh, nah, I doubt it. I mean, I, I live where there's too many septics at the moment. Yeah. Seattle, it's a great business. But I don't know. It, a, it's just kind of gross. And then B, I'm super busy doing home inspections. So I really yeah. don't have any time. So I'd have, I, what I thought of is I could hire somebody and then like have uh, that be like a business that I hire someone and they do it. But I, I don't know. I'm just too busy. I got, to, I already got so much going on. <laughs> do you use the uh, infrared template, Dylan? Uh, that's actually just for my guy, Brent Foster, who does okay. nothing but infrared. Yeah. Um, I use infrared on every home inspection, but I just I do too, yeah. blend it into my report. You know? Yeah. Have you ever used that template uh -uh. or did you build it? Uh, I think we built it as a rough draft for him and now it's probably all totally different. Um, yeah. It's, um, I don't, I don't know what he, he's doing with that. I, that was kind of an, an old orphan template for him. That's interesting. We ship with it. I didn't even know. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> I, I use the FLIR one. I've never done an isolated uh, thermal uh inspection but i was trained in it and i was trained how to use the FLIR software and it's terrible yeah yeah no we've actually been in conversations with fluke about having setting up software for those guys they're actually out of everett or they have a big big group up in everett but uh, it's hard dealing with these huge corporations that it, you know, just weird <laughs> you don't even know who makes a decision you know it's all this like chain of command um well i just updated dylan and 
that new text editor is incredible. Yeah, it's freaking <laughs> just awesome. just added hours to my... I know. <laughs> well, this is what I feel terrible. Like, I want to ship with this thing that's, like, done, <laughs> and you could just plug it in and use it. But it's like, Steve keeps, you know, dribbling these new tools at me, and I'm like, well, this completely... He's got to stop. You know, yeah, he's got to yeah. stop. He's killing um, me. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that... I don't know if I totally showed you guys. I think you probably know this, but the way you can come in here and have... Uh, you know, these text replacements, so it's underlined. You see all that, Harold? You know, so you can, yeah, like, change. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, and that, you know, obviously that, like, totally messes with your library now because I've got a bunch of comments where I had, like, you know, the right side garage door, the left side garage door, the middle garage door, the two garage doors that, you know, it's like, <laughs> and, you know, now you could take 20 comments and make them one but it's actually really hard to write that one comment because you've, you've got to like massage the English where all of those different mm -hmm. variables will work. So yeah, all this stuff's just this massive time sink in a lot of ways, but, um, but I must say it also, it's giving me, you know, reports that, I mean, this is yeah. why I don't need any other business. I just get tons of home inspections because people read the reports and that's mm -hmm. where I get my business from, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, it's, self-fulfilling yeah. thing you know um and, and they look good the even when you're looking like with your text uh editor with the drop downs with the replacement values mm -hmm. when i see the comment it's obvious to me that that that, that field is there nice other yeah. software when they have that um replacement values you will when you open it up or move it over it's not obvious that that is there so sometimes you'll forget yeah to yep. transfer it for some reason even though that's just a little dotted underline it still it just jumps out to me and it's visually um you know it says hey i'm here come you know come change me if you want to totally and in <laughs> fact you know i even have some of these set up um where the whole purpose i don't even in this one i think i did add something but a lot of that underline is just to remind me that I need to do something there, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and uh, Harold, just so you know how you set these up, you can underline any text and then you come up to this guy and then now you can list out a whole bunch of different replacements. That makes sense. Yeah. Pretty, really, really easy to do. So you just underline it and this, this is your friend right here. Um, yeah, I just got, I mean, Scott and I just got this new text package, what a day, like today, I think. I mean, it's it's brand new. So, of course, there was a bunch of drama fixing bugs, first thing. But <laughs> now, I think he's already knocked them all out, or at least. I hadn't I, found any yet, so, yeah. I found a ton this morning. I was like, <laughs> I, I like, just now downloaded it and updated it. Okay. Well, we hopefully we got them through for you. Yeah. I, I owe you, Scott. I mean, you really took the took the mobile app on the chin man that you were so great yeah that was, that was rough yeah. <laughs> we made it though it's working yeah it's awesome uh, that's yeah. really awesome and it you're yeah. it, it's helpful i mean harold doesn't have very good internet and and the fact that it works for you makes me feel confident talking to harold and being like nah, i think it'll work i mean it, it's um yeah, it, it, i haven't had any problems and i'm on viasat which is uh pretty you know crummy you know slow satellite internet so it's yeah. real happy. I'm actually happy that the Zoom meeting is working. Yeah, <laughs> nice. that was yeah me too. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I, th I think we've been through it, guys. Uh, I really appreciate you being here. It's always fun to, to do these things and uh, appreciate your support. Let us know if we can help and we'll keep trying to crank out more, more videos and more features and stuff. Keep working on it. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you getting us all together. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. All Thanks, right, Dale. guys. Okay. Have a good yeah. night. Take care. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.